In the words of Paul Halmos, the only way to learn mathematics is to do mathematics. Hello boys and girls, my name is Miss Alia Brewster and today I'll be guiding you through the concept of adding and subtracting decimals for grade 5 mathematics. So grab a pencil and a notebook, get settled because we're about to start. Are you ready? Because I'm ready, let's begin. I always like to start with a warm-up exercise. So for today's exercise, we'll be reciting the five times table. Let's go. Five times zero is zero. Five times one is five. Five times two is 10. Five times three is 15. Five times four is 20. Five times five is 25. Five times six is 30. Five times seven is 35. 5 times 8 is 40, 5 times 9 is 45, 5 times 10 is 50, 5 times 11 is 55, 5 times 12 is 60. Now we'll do our questions. What is the product of 5 and 10? The product of 5 and 10 is 50. How many 5s are there in 20? They are four fives in 20. Five groups of six is how many? Five groups of six equals the 30. Now I'll move on to saying a poem. The name of this poem is called Decimal Place Value. Reading decimal is easy, you'll see. They have two names like you and me. First, you'll say the name as if there were no dot. Then you'll say the name of the last place value spot. Place values. From the poem, you'll notice that the central topic there is place value and being able to read and write place values. So let's take a step back and try to understand exactly what place values are. Now on the screen, you would notice we have the number 35 and 6 tenths. I repeat, 35 and 6 tenths. I did not say 35.6. I did not say 35.6. How we say the name of this number, we say 35 and 6 tenths. The place value of 3 in this number would be tens, while the place value of 5 would be ones, and the place value of 6 would be tenths. Now to break this down further, if we are saying that 3 is in the tenths place value, that simply means that 3 multiplied by 10 
is a expression of the worth of that place value. So three there is actually worth 30, while five as ones is worth five single units or five ones. However, six tenths is represented not as a whole number, but a part of a whole. Therefore, we can represent six tenths with a fraction. What six tenths is saying is that out of a whole that is divided into 10 pieces, six of those pieces are occupied. Therefore, six tenths is not a whole, but in fact, it is part of a whole. So it's important to note that the numbers that come after the decimal point are not whole numbers, but in fact, they are less than whole numbers. They are part of a whole. Here, we'll develop a deeper understanding for decimal place values. For this exercise, we'll look at the number 3.145 hundreds. 3.145 hundreds. So in that number, the tree is actually in the ones place value, right? And tree there is represented by the numeral tree and it is a whole number. However, all the numbers that come after the point are not whole numbers, but they're parts of a whole. The one in that number is in the tenths place value. We can represent tenths in a fraction by putting the number of the value at the top and the denominator as tenths. So in fact, one tenth can be represented by the fraction one tenth. It can also be represented by a decimal that is 0 0.1. The place value of the numeral 4 is in the hundreds place value. That place value can be represented as a fraction where we we'll put 4 as a numerator and 100 as a denominator. So that's 4 one hundredths. It can also be represented as a decimal and that decimal would be 0 0.04. The last digit in that number, which is 5, is in the thousands place value. That place value can be represented by a fraction, which is 5 upon 1000, or it can be represented as a decimal, which is 0 0.005. So what you need to grasp here, boys and girls, is that decimals can actually be expressed as a fraction and also it can be expressed as a decimal. Adding decimals. To add decimals, follow these steps. Number one, write down the numbers one under the other with the decimal points lined up. Number two, put in zeros so the numbers have the same length. Number three, add each column individually. And lastly, remembering to put the decimal point in the answer. Let's say you're asked to find the sum of 12 and 3rd one hundredths and 5 and 4 tenths. How we'll do this? We'll first start by setting the numbers, having the decimals line up. That simply means that you set the numbers in such a way that the points fall one under the other, just as how you see it being depicted on the screen. There we have point 0.2 and point 0.5 falling directly below each other. So the next step is to add each column individually. We'll start from the right and move to the left. Starting from the right, we must first add one and zero. That will give us one. Then the other column will add three and four. That will give us seven. Then of course we write back the point and then we add two plus five, we'll get seven. 
and then we add 1 plus 0 we'll get 1. Therefore the answer for 12 and third of 100 plus 5 and 4 tenths would be 17 and 7 to 100. Now we'll do a second example. For this example we'll examine how to add decimals and whole numbers. Suppose you're asked to find the sum of 901 plus 5 and 2 tenths and 1 and 4 thousandths. What you have to do, you remember that whole numbers always have a point at the back. We don't always include a point where we, when we are writing whole numbers. However, whole numbers always have a point at the back. Therefore, when we're setting up our problem, we make sure to add the point at the back of the whole number and then have every other number with the point lined up exactly below that number. Look at the example on the screen. There you would see 901.000. Why did I put those three zeros at the end there? The reason being is so that the sum, all of the, the numerals will have the same length, so it will be easier for you to add and not get too confused, right? The other number is five and two tenths. So again, we put a point directly under the first point and we have five on the left side and two on the right side. And we included some zeros in front and behind that number to make it the same length. The last number there is one and four thousandths. We included a point directly under the second point again, and then we added some zeros to make the number lying up in the same length. Now we can add each column. Again, we're starting from the right and we're moving to the left. Let's start from the right. The first column there, we have zero, zero, and four. So we add zero plus zero plus four will give us four. The second column, we have zero plus zero plus zero will give us zero. And the third column, we have zero plus two plus zero will give us two. And then, of course, we write the point back into our answer. And then we move on to the fourth column. We have to add one plus five plus one that will equal to seven. Then we'll add the second column, which is zero plus zero plus zero. That will give us zero. And then we add the last column, which is nine plus zero plus zero, which will give us nine. Therefore, the solution to this problem would be 907.204 thousandths. That would be the answer. Okay, boys and girls, now it's time for you to try an activity on your own. Find the sum of 134, 23 and 5 tenths, and 5 and 3 thousandths. Remember, write down the numbers one under the other with the decimal points lined up. Put zeros in so the numbers have the same length. Then you add each column individually and remember to include the decimal point in your answer. Did you get it correct? Let's go through. We were tasked in finding the sum of 134, 23 and 5 tenths, and 2 and 3 thousandths. 
We begin by first lining up the decimal points. We said that a whole number always has a point at the back, even though it may not be written in, it is a understood rule that every whole number has a point at the back. Therefore, we write the whole, whole number, we put the point at the back, and then we add zeros to make it the same length as the others. Then we'll set the number 23 and 5 tenths just below 134 with the point lined up exactly under the first number. Then we'll set up the number 2 and 3000 with a point lining up exactly below the second number. And then of course we'll add the zeros to make them all the same length. So it's easier for us to add. Starting from the right and moving to the left, we begin to add. The first column from the right, we add zero plus zero plus three, we'll get three. Then the second column will add 0 plus 0 plus 0, we'll get 0 of course. And then the third column we add 0 plus 5 plus 0, we'll get 5. And then of course we write the point back, that is very important. And then we'll move on to the fourth column, we add 4 plus 3 plus 2, and that will give us 9. And then we add the fifth column, which is 3 plus 2 plus 0, that will give us 5. And then we add the last column, which is 1 plus 0 plus 0, and that will give us 1. Now that we have our answer, we know that the solution is 159 and 503 thousandths. Now, boys and girls, we'll move on to subtracting decimals. When subtracting decimals, the same method is applied as adding decimals. After we finish lining up the decimal points, we subtract instead of add. For example, suppose we're asked to solve this problem. Mother bought 19 and 7 tenths cm of ribbon, and she gave 7 and 2 tenths cm of ribbon to Sue. How much ribbon was left? Okay, we begin by lining up the decimal points. So we start by setting up 19 and 7 tenths cm, and then just below that, we write 7 and 2 tenths cm with the points falling directly below each other. And then I add in a zero there to make the two numbers the same length. Now we can add from the right going to the left. We start with 7 minus 2 will give us 5. And if you notice there, I wrote back cm because our answer should be written in the unit that we're calculating and the unit here is cm right then of course we write back the point and then we move to the second column we we minus 9 from 7 and that answer would be 2 and then 1 minus 0 would of course be 1 therefore the answer would be 12 and 5 tenths cm you can try this activity on your own acna skipping rope is 38 and 56 hundredths cm long. It is too long for her to use. So mother cuts 15 and 12 hundredths cm from the rope. What is the length of the rope after mother cuts it? Remember, you write down the numbers one under the other with the decimal points lined up. Put in zero so the numbers have the same length then you subtract each column individually and remember to include a decimal point in your answer.
Did you get it correct? Let's check. The problem we were asked to solve is a Cine skipping rope is 38 and 56,000 cm long. It is too long for her to use, so mother cuts 15 and 1200 cm from the rope. What is the length of the rope after mother cuts it? Of course, we have to take away. So we set up our problem with the points under each other, all lined up. And we begin to subtract from the right, moving to the left. So starting from right and moving to left, we write back centimeter because centimeter is the unit that we're working with. So now we subtract. Six subtract two would be four. We write four right below. We move on to the second column. Five subtract one would be four. We write four below that. And then we write back our point. Then we move on to the third column, which is eight subtract five, which would be three. And then to the last column, which is three subtract one would be two. Therefore, our answer would be 23 and for the four hundreds CM. Thank you, boys and girls, for tuning in to today's activities. I hope you enjoy it. Remember, the only way to learn mathematics is to do mathematics. So even though our session might be over, you can still practice in your spare time. Thank you for tuning in once again and goodbye.